Hi guys, Mike here. Today I'm going to unbox the Thinkware dash cam, the U1000 series front and back. This is a 4K dash cam and if you are in the market for one of the best dash cams, I'm talking about top of line, this is one that you want to consider. So U1000 is a dual dash cam series with a front 4K camera and rear 2K camera. And it has a lot of features that you will not find in a lot of other lesser dash cams. So this will run you retail about $400. But I think that for a lot of you that are interested in high-end dash cams that are cloud connected, this should be on your short list of dash cams to consider. All right, so this is the U1000, of course. This is a two-channel version, and mine comes with 32 gigabytes, but it has expandable storage. You can note one thing that you will notice right away is the sh unique shape of this dash cam. Instead of being one block or wide, it tries to keep a little bit of a lesser, thinner profile so that when it's on your dashboard, or actually not on your dashboard, but actually on your mirror mount, it takes up a little bit less room than some of the competition. So the way this works is it'll mount up like this, and then as you can see, then the this side sticks out the front of out of your windshield, and this part then mounts directly onto your windshield. So it has a lot of unique advantages that way. Uh, primarily, I would say is that uh, it looks less obtrusive. So it's less likely that it will block your vision, and also a lot less likely that someone else outside will uh, easily notice that there's a dash cam. So that could be good or bad. Uh, obviously, there's going to be some status lights that you can turn on and off on most dash cams. This one, I believe, as well. Inside the box, we get, of course, get a nice, thick, quick start guide and warranty. Since there's a lot of features on here, it's gonna be a little bit thicker than normal. And actually, most of it is because this is a multilingual company. Now, Thinkware is a Korea-based company. And uh, I have found that a lot of the highest end dash cams do tend to come out of Korea for whatever reason, uh, Korea and China. So uh, here we have a bunch of cables. Now they have a full on insulation kit. As you can see here, this is a cigarette lighter socket plug and it's got a DC barrel type plug to power it on. This is not unusual. Uh, these came out in 2019, and I guess back in 2019, they were not using as much USB-C as, as a lot of other places did. This here is a really long cable, and I believe this is for the rear facing camera. And it's a 2K camera, so um, it's actually pretty thick. Now, if you were thinking about getting this one versus a third party one um, that I actually use two, uh, I, use, I use a different dash cam. This one, I can see that this one has a thicker cable. So that could be some sort of consideration if you have trouble, if you think you might have trouble uh, routing the cables around. Rear dash cam, right here, it's tiny and definitely won't block up much of the view. Um, I can see it's got the power and a video out here through the micro USB jack. It's very lightweight made of plastic, it's rotatable, and also you can adjust the uh, the rotation based on uh, using the app as you charge as well. Now there is a serial number and QR codes on these. I believe use these for registration, so make sure that those are easily visible. And this does have a little microphone here too. So you got a rear facing camera right here, sensor, very small. And also in this particular kit that I have here, it also includes a hardwire kit. So the hardwiring is going to be very important if you want to make sure that you have power going to the dash cam while you are, uh, you know, while you are going to be using parking mode. So they give you the cables necessary to go ahead and, and run that. This looks pretty standard. It's got two sets of fuses on here, and you will probably run this through a add a circuit through your fuse box. Now, something like this is going to vary uh, in complexity depending on what kind of car you drive, but for the most part, a lot of cars these days have a little fuse box that you can go ahead and run these cables through, and I'll have a little video showing you uh, how to do that in general as well. Inside, of course, I said we have a 32 gigabyte kit in here, and they have the, yep, yeah, it's right here, Thinkware 32 gigabyte kit. Now these micro SD cards are actually very different from regular micro SD cards. These, particularly the ones right here, are gonna be high endurance ones and you're gonna to wanna to use these. These are made for video surveillance. 
meaning that there's going to be a lot of write cycles on there. So it's going to be particularly tuned well for that type of performance and last a lot longer in extra special uh, heat heat and cold conditions that a lot of micro other micro lesser micro SD cards would fail in. We see have some cable stickies that you can use to go ahead and route the cables better and stick them to various surfaces, get them out of the way. And then we have a different mount mechanism here. So they use, of course, like most other dash cam companies, a VHB tape, 3M VHB tape. And this would just stick onto the windshield portion. And when this is stuck on the windshield, then you can just clip it on and off. So it's kind of like a little slide in place uh, type of mechanism here. So. You stick that in there and, oh, this way. And then you just clip it in place, rotate it like that. Uh, yeah, so it'll snap. <laughs> just so you know, if you're gonna really try to remove these later, um, it moves to the left. So when you're, when you're facing it from there, it moves to the left. Okay, so they give you one of these. You can actually get extra ones and another VHB tape in case you mess up or need to adjust it. You can get these separately online as well, so don't worry too much about that. Now let's take a closer look at this right here. Uh, this is the actual dash cam, the main head unit, along with all the, uh, the brains, if you will, and also where you're sticking a micro SD card. Micro SD card comes over here on this left-hand side. We have some indicator lights on here that show GPS. It shows whether or not it's recording, and it shows whether or not it's got Wi-Fi on. There's other three other different buttons on here. First one right over here is power. Next, we have Wi-Fi. Next is microphone on and off. And of course, bonding status display lights to let you know what's really going on. So those are gonna be easy to see because when this is mounted on your windshield, you're gonna be able to see the lights right away and the buttons are gonna be easy to access here. So that's another one, one positive reason of this, this type of design versus others. So uh, if you were looking at today's technology in 2022, uh, this is gonna be still one of the, uh, the best. Now I know that sounds really strange because th these first came out in 2019, but you know, sensor technologies have improved a, a bit but a lot of them are really just designed for other purposes. So it, I, I hope that they'll have a refresh sometime soon, maybe maybe next year or something like that. But this is still what we're looking at is a Sony Starvis sensor of a type that I will link over here. And this was going to go ahead and record in full K resolution on here. Now, I do believe that there is a polarizer that you can attach on here that will go ahead and improve the quality. And it is included here in this little other bag that's also here. And this is a permanent stick-on type of polarizer. I highly recommend this for most cases. And that's going to help it cut through the glare on your windshield. As we're all going to get some, and this will help cut it down. Now, on the flip side is it's going to, you're going to lose maybe about a um, you know, quarter to half a stop of light, which means it's going to darken up the image a little bit, you know, but it, for the most part, it's going to make a lot more sense. One area where you might not want to stick this on is you only drive at night or really dark conditions, in which case you probably won't see too much benefit from sticking this on. But it's really nice that they add this included in the kit. Typically, when you get a third-party polarizer, they're going to charge you $30, $40 or so. And the fact that they include nice one li nice little stick on is a very nice um, surprise. It's a circular polarizer filter, of course, to give you instructions how to stick it on, what the proper method is, is, and the guide point is top to bottom, and then we actually have a little cloth to help you uh, clean up your lens. Really nice touches on here. There's a customer service information card here, and also information about connecting it onto the Thinkware cloud connection and service tutorial. So for my initial testing, I might not run all this cable all the way through just yet. I'll run just the front dash cam unit. I'll plug it in to a cigarette lighter socket, you know, just to get the power into it, uh, get that tested. And uh, in the future, I will uh, follow up with some footage and videos of the rear dash cam. And then, of course, I'm going to compare this with my other 4K dash cam, which uh, some of you already know that I use, which is the Blackview 900X, which is also cloud connected. And uh, I see that some of the, the differences in the, the um, design and the, uh, the quality of the build, 
I want to say that um, overall, my first impressions probably give it over to the Thinkware. I think the Thinkware appears to be a more premium product. And from what I've seen online, the image quality is a little bit better on the Thinkware because it is a little bit newer than uh, than my Black View. But you know, I'm gonna do full on testing and we'll see if there's uh, been any changes, updates or optimizations on the sensor side. Now, as far as features go, I do believe Thinkware wins on most of the cases. And uh, you know, one of one of the main things that um, I think that really immediately makes a difference for most people is the very fact that the rear dash cam has 2K resolution, uh, which is you know higher than 1080p. So it's going to be a little bit better in that respect. And then I suppose another thing that is going to make uh, more sense for some people who tend to have to park their car a lot is the very fact that there's actually a over here on the right hand side, we have the video yin, okay, from the rear dash cam, and then we have a DC yin, this is for the power, and we have an ex external slot over here, and then we have a radar slot here. Now the radar will work with a separate accessory that you pay $90 for, or basically $100, I'll have a link down below for that, and that will give your dash cam a better parking mode by using radar technologies to sense whether or not there's someone coming and then record only then. So it helps to make sure that your battery life lasts a lot longer and so that it doesn't record a lot of wasted stuff. I think that's one of the big problems I have with 4K dash cams these days is the ones that aren't super smart uh, really don't have any option. They just either continuously always recording or they start recording once they feel a bump and then you miss a bunch of stuff going on. Either way, it wastes both time, energy, storage capacity, and it's just uh, it's just a bit of a hassle trying to go through all the footage. Whereas something that you know you have a radar where it detects when some object actually comes up or person comes up, and then only then starts recording in full K. I think that makes a lot of sense. So there, there's some, uh, you know, there's some areas there where I feel, um, you know, think where has the uh, my black my black view beat. But again, subscribe, like, and I'll show you what I find out by running both of these side by side. All right, that's it for this video. Please give a like, subscribe for more. Catch you next one. Thanks for watching.